Let's talk about Home Assistant breaking changes. The new version 2022.5 is out. Let's take a look at them. Now, just to give you a little bit of reference, last month I actually had Home Assistant troubles. And if you were subscribed to the channel, you'll probably see my short where I actually talked about it. And what happened? Home Assistant just got stuck on a daily basis for some reason. And the only way to fix it was to go to the latest fixed version. I think it was DOP5. So that wasn't really covered in any documentation. It's just part of the risk of being on the Home Assistant journey and upgrading to the latest version immediately. So please consider if you wanna jump on the bandwagon and update it. Unless you have time to roll back or to fix it, it's most likely better to wait for a little bit of time, maybe a couple of weeks, or just skip one release before you upgrade. Now let's just check those breaking changes. So scroll down, you can see it right at the bottom after all of the new releases click on the breaking changes. The first breaking change is the configuration menu, which really isn't gonna affect you. The only way it's gonna affect you is you're not gonna know where things are, but things are not gonna break because of the menu changing specifically. And here you get details of where things have moved. It streamlined the experience. I know it's difficult to relearn a new user interface. It looks like Home Assistant is trying to make it easier for new people to come in, but for existing users, it might be a little bit frustrating, but I'm pretty sure Hub will get used to this a UI change. So for decons, we had siren entities that were on the Switch platform. This is going to be affecting a very niche amount of people, just people that are upgrading from 2021.10. Um, and the worst case, they'll just be uh, unavailable and need to be removed manually. Slight change here on the energy sensors, the cost and compensation sensor entities will be hidden by default. The barrel lights no longer support certain attributes like the white underscore value and the RGBW color. This is an interesting one with the history stats actually it could be seen as a feature not really as a breaking change, but we've got a, a reduction on the number of rows are stored on the database to how the history is actually stored. Let's look at home kit. So the device guide, the carbon dioxide, is no longer admitted as a binary sensor device class. So if you've overridden the device class in your customization, you're going to need to adjust your configuration. The IKEA trad free, the native groups have been removed and there's a suggestion to use the light groups instead. And the cool thing that it's now configured via the UI and not YAML anymore. LifeX is something that I use, so I'm gonna look at this one. The way Home Assistant finds the network adapter for LifeX is changing. This is actually all positive to me. It's just gonna make it more fast and more reliable. So it should be all good. So the media source, basically how it's filtering out stuff that has a dot will no longer appear in the media browser. So your file directory starts with a dot and means that it's marked as hidden. So no longer gonna be in the media browser, which sounds like another improvement. Some more optimization of how Minimax stores data behind the scenes. And that comes with some certain limitation, which you can see over here. I don't really use that much. So not too um, concerned. ONVIF, so the deprecated YAML configuration has been removed and now everything is configured by the UI. So if you haven't made the switch, it's a good time to do it. Well, you have to do it. So recorder, this is a change also, substantial change. Home Assistant will now automatically repack your database once a month. So this repacking is gonna just optimize and shrink the database size. Uh, so that will mean that you can have speedier backups and your system is going to be more fluid. Sonos, the Sonos group attribute on the Sonos media players has been renamed to group underscore members, sort of to keep it in line with the other integrations. Same with the Synology DSM entities and devices. Uh, so the naming of these entities and devices have been renamed. The trigger based template sensors are now initialized with the last known state instead of unknown, which is great news. The base URL option for text to speech has been deprecated. A couple of things with Z-Wave JS, like the server instance, you're gonna need to keep that up to date to get the latest features. And if we scroll right at the bottom, keep, keep remember to keep going towards the bottom the um, Arlo has actually disappeared. So I remember I used to have Arlo cameras uh, years ago. I got the battery one and Arlo has been removed, which is, which is a big deal in my opinion. I think there are a lot of people that have, might have these devices around. And the reason why it was removed is because it was in a broken state for a long time caused by authentication changes upstream. So this has been removed and also digital loggers and this updater that was deprecated has now been removed. Always pay attention to the fairway to the following at the end. If you want me to make more of these home assistant breaking changes, remember to like the video and subscribe to the next breaking change video that's gonna drop next month. I'm gonna leave you my latest dashboard project that you can see over here. This is Geo from Smart Makers. See you in the next one. Ciao.